The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, seated or kneeling. Almighty and most merciful Father, We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A very warm welcome to Chester Cathedral for this service of choral evensong, whether you're with us in person in the choir or joining us online. We're very grateful for the, to the St. John singers for singing our services this weekend and wish them a safe journey home at the end of this service. 
We continue by singing from the Green Hymn Book in the stalls 349. We stand to sing, Come Let Us Join Our Cheerful Songs. We sit as the choir sing the psalm set for today, 73, standing at the end for the Gloria.
Our Old Testament reading is taken from Deuteronomy um, chapter 7, beginning at verse 7. It was not because you were more numerous than other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and who repays in their own person those who reject him. He does not delay but repays in their own person those who reject him. Therefore observe diligently the commandments, the statutes and the ordinances that I am commanding you today. If you heed these ordinances by diligently observing them, that the Lord your God will maintain with you the covenant loyalty that he swore to your ancestors. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. Here endeth the lesson.
Our New Testament reading is taken from the Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. This is the message of the one who stands in the lampshades, lampstands to Ephesus and to Smyrna, those churches in Turkey. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You, hurt the, you hate the work of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life, that is in the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that you are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches, whoever conquers, will not be harmed by the second death. Here ends the lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This afternoon's anthem sets the text of the early 11th century hymn, Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem, with the words by St. Fulbert of Chartres and the music by Charles Villiers Stanford, whose centenary of death we have recently commemorated.
May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We heard in those two Bible readings how in different ways God has promised to be faithful to his people through every generation. He has made a covenant, a binding commitment with those who love him and keep his commandments, and that covenant promise stands to this day. But what does it mean for us to love God and to keep his commandments? There are so many commandments in the Bible, instructions from God to his people about how he would have them live. Some feel confusing or even irrelevant to our modern ears and context. But we can simplify things if we remember that Jesus was asked once which was the greatest commandment. He responded by saying that there were two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, Jesus said, hang all the law and the prophets. On the surface, this looks so easy, but of course in practice it is anything but. There are no shortcuts or quick fixes here. Jesus knows what he is asking is incredibly challenging, and those who follow him will frequently fall short. These two commandments, and indeed all those others we find in Scripture, are in reality invitations to a new way of life, in which we try to refocus on making love a reality. Love of God, love of one another, and love even of ourselves. This will look different for each of us, but it will involve worship, and it will involve service of and care for others, and it will involve trying to be the person God is calling us to be. The good news is that the rewards are abundant. Those who love God and keep his commandments, he will in turn love, bless, and multiply, and they will be given all good things just as the people of Israel were promised in today's reading from Deuteronomy. It will be the same for the people of God in this and every generation. And finally, as we heard from Revelation, those who remain faithful will one day win the crown of life. We just need to keep our side of the bargain. Amen. So let us pray. Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority. Let us seek his intercession, that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Jesus Christ, great high priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the church, your broken body in the world. We remember those facing persecution even today for their faith. We pray for our brothers and sisters across the Anglican Communion, particularly today for the Diocese of Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia. For Mark, Julie and Sam, our bishops. For the parishes, fresh expressions, chaplaincies and schools of this diocese and for our cathedral church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. We remember before God those places of conflict, particularly praying for Israel and Gaza, for Ukraine and Russia, for rising tensions across the Middle East with Iran, for Yemen, for Sudan and for Haiti. We pray for all those working for peace and reconciliation, for the leaders of the nations, for all exercising power and influence in society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your sisters and brothers in need, distress, or sorrow. We pray for those caught up in the stabbing in the shopping centre in Sydney yesterday. For those injured and traumatised. For the homeless and the refugee. For the sick in body, mind and spirit. Remembering in this place, especially Peter Jenner, Carol Weaver, Judith Hall, Stephen Smalley, His Majesty the King, and Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, as well as all those we carry particularly on our own hearts today, and those for whom candles have been lit and prayers said in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround with your saints and angels those who have died trusting your promises. Praying particularly at this time for the repose of the souls of Christopher Hewitson, Sharon Wiggins, Josie Goodwin, and praying for comfort for all those who mourn this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet, if you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We bring all our prayers together as we say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, 124, entirely coincidentally, Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem.
God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen.